Out in front of a wildfire, there is often a blizzard of flying embers, thousands of firebrands being propelled by winds that can reach more than 100 miles per hour. But it only takes winds of about 30 miles per hour to fuel a firestorm like this. The burning projectiles are mostly made up of the trees being consumed by the fire. Leaves, needles, sticks, twigs, and pine cones. That's what gets your structure. Up to 90% of the homes ignited by wildfire are caused by a firestorm like this. We aim to recreate that field, that whole sky full of embers in our lab to evaluate how homes respond to them. Scientists at the IBHS Research Facility in South Carolina simulate ember showers using a wall of 105 fans. Research engineer Dan Gorham says the homes in their studies caught fire in spots where embers were able to accumulate. Maybe one and then five and then eight, and maybe two of them get blown away, but then 10 more come and land on that spot. And so this essentially pile of embers start to kind of self-heat and continue to heat and the accumulation of one where the embers accumulate and the fact that they accumulate is what results in that transition to ignition. Surveillance cameras caught this ember attack during the Cameron Peak fire last October. Accumulation led to small ground fires and eventually destroyed this cabin on Crystal Mountain. One of 224 homes destroyed in that fire. There is no such thing or this concept of a fireproof home, right? We can have this idea of resistance and resilience, but not fireproof. Gorham says you can make your home defensible, and it starts by thinking about where those embers might accumulate on or near your home during a wildfire. All those locations where debris like pine needles and leaves like to accumulate, those are the exact same places that embers accumulate. He also says to seal off any cracks and spaces in the siding, roof tiles, or vents. Homes can also be upgraded or built new with wildfire resistant materials. In this experiment, half of a duplex was built with the latest wildfire fire resistant methods, rock mulch instead of wood, non-combustible siding, multi-pane windows, and an enclosed eave. It resisted the ember shower while the side with the out-of-date build went up in flames. And to take the research a step further, they teamed up with Headwater Economics on a cost study. They found that building with wildfire resistant materials in most cases was equal to a traditional build and in some cases even costs less. And we're always advocating for the use of science as a justification for why we need to build resilient and also acknowledging that building resilient doesn't have to price people out. Meteorologist Corey Reppenhagen, 9 News.